here's a beautiful set of antlers that I'm going to try to bring back to life. Picked these up on the way back from my deer hunt a few days ago from some family members up there in Idaho. He shot this back in the 80s. It's been outside ever since, so it's got a lot of weather damage. Also, you can see he broke off his left sword, his left number three, and the tips of several other tines. Beautiful set of antlers though. Do my best to bring them back, restore those tines. Try to use this smaller bowl that was shot a couple years ago. Anyway, that's the challenge right there. A lot of weather damage, broken tines. We'll see what we can do. So what I've done so far is I've come up with this base. It doesn't have, you know, near the mass, nor does this tine hold this off a five point. And that was the number five tine. Has a little bit of a blade, um, which the original one on the other side does a little bit. Neither of these carry the mass, but at least they have the length. And if I put these two together, I'm going to put this stud right here in the middle. And you can see I can start to get the length. Then I'll just have to blend that in the middle there. Anyway, so that's where I'm at so far. I'm going to go get some JB Weld, some JB Steel Weld to use on the inside. And I'll use some of their wood um, weld on the outside so I can try to blend it. So far, so good. There's the steel. It only takes five minutes to to harden. And then uh, we'll put the uh, wood JB on now and try to mold it. So hopefully you can see this. I went ahead and did the same thing at the main joint down here. As far as the wood putty. Um, there's my first joint. That turned out really good. It's solid. And I put a big stud in this one. Did the exact same thing. Obviously I've got a blend on this area right here. Try to make some of the same creases and dimples when you see them come. It's a lot easier to match it later. This is only my second one, so making a, up a lot of this as I go. I'm gonna do this one, replace this third. I've already got um, holes drilled in the second brow tines on both sides. Put those back on. I'll probably end up replacing most of them. He's broke the ends off of almost every time. Well, now it's time to blend in all the additions. Got tines all over the place. I ended up replacing six of them that have been broken off. There's a couple others that are missing a little bit, but I'm just gonna leave them. They look fine for character. And I'll try to make all this look natural, weather permitting, as you can see getting pretty ugly. I'm not sure if it's supposed to snow or rain. There's a look at it. Beautiful set of horns. Hopefully uh, I won't take away from that. All right, I better get going. Before So I got them all blended. 
Um, something I forgot to mention is a little trick I learned on my first one is I cut all my antlers on an angle. Makes it much more deceptive when it's all covered up. You can see all those are on angles. Cut the brow tines on an angle. So what I'm gonna do next, since I have so many different colors, um, if you've ever tried to stain an antler this old, even where it was polished, used to be, it's now just rough and very porous, cracked. So when you put the stain on it, it just, you can't wipe it off. Um, it just soaks in like a sponge. Instead of being a nice brown, uh, like it is naturally, it just turns into a dark gray, and you can't, you know, polish the tips off like they're supposed to be. So, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to take a nice cream matte paint and just paint the entire antlers so I am starting with the same base so I can work from there and try to get the colors to to look natural rather than trying to work from these because if I try to stain this which is a fresher antler won't take the stain like it's I mean that's ideal you can just wipe it off and leave the parts dark that you want and polish the tips you know like they look but these old ones just won't do that especially 30 years sitting out in the so that weather. turned out really nice I used white gloss and kind of blended that to the ends so it gives it that polished um, look probably can't see it very good in the sun and shadows but since the paint's wet I can't really move it so now I'm gonna have to work some magic to blend in some of those um, areas where I jointed the tines I'm not happy with the especially right there that sword might have to go in and carve some lines and some designs to make it blend all right so it's been a couple hours paints mostly dry it's a little tacky in some places but good enough I'm gonna go ahead and try something kind of funky probably a bit of a risk but these are the set of horns that are good to try these kind of things on so far so good it's kind of cool Let's see if I can do a little of this without spraying my phone there's a little bit of wind blowing around so that's why I haven't been filming as much Gives a really nice blend. That wind's starting to swirl around quite a bit. Put the phone down and finish this. We'll see how it turns out. Well, that turned out to be a very pleasant surprise. Um, some of those areas I wanted to go back and work on are now completely covered with that texture. See that bullet hole I left? I think that's kind of cool, so we'll just leave that. 
but everything else turned out really nice. I was able to blend that right up into the polished ivory. Um, it'll still look a whole lot better once I get down with a paintbrush and take some stain and start, you know, changing the colors of dark from almost black to, to light. But what a nice base that gave me to work with. And I'd never be able to blend it that well with a paintbrush. Goes right up to the ends. <laughs> brushing in those rub marks from fighting, tearing down pine trees, stuff like that. Add some realism to it so it's not just one solid. What this paint is, you know, it leaves too uniform of a color. So what I'm doing now, which is kind of the fun part, taking a, a sand block and just adding a lot of two-tone colors to it, especially these areas. You know, they're gonna get rubbed and turn light. Now that light tan that I um, used on the original base really is coming out nice. But anyway, I'll finish up the sanding and uh, see how it turns out. So I finished sanding it. I think that added a ton of character and a little more dimension to the horns so it's not uh, looking like it was or it's looking less like it was painted and more natural hopefully you can see that but I'm never quite satisfied so I'm going to throw the whole kitchen sink at this thing I've got this light brown vinyl fabric um, paint I'm just going to go ahead and mist it now and see how that turns out. That actually looks pretty cool. It's lightening up some of those dark areas and it's certainly adding a different tone of color to it. So 
So just as I finished, the more I looked at this uh, sword that I put on, it was a little unique with that big blade on it. Just really drove me nuts, so I took it off. I realized that if you make something unique, even though it looks cool, everyone looks at it. I haven't really showed it to anyone, but in my mind, everyone would look at it and say, hey, I can tell which one you replaced, because it doesn't look like the other one. The best I could, I created pretty much the exact same horn using some putty. And now I'm gonna put some putty on top of that. I made a mold off of the pattern in the horn. Um, kind of an experiment as well. Out of some JB Weld I took it and uh, pushed it into the imprint and made a mold. And that's just hardening right now. And then I'm going to use that to press into the the putty, give it an exact mold I, or exact uh, print, I hope. Just finishing up, repainting, restaining. Had to restain the whole thing. Do quite a bit of painting to make sure that right sword blended in that I redid. Really liked how the color's turning out. It's really deep, dark. It's a little glossy still, but I think as that stain continues to dry, you'll get a little more of a matte finish. Did a lot more sanding to bring out the ridges and all those dimples. Make it look a little more natural. Wanted to take just a second and show you that little mold tool that I made to leave the imprint. I just took some JB Weld, stuck it on this dowel, waited a couple minutes until it started to uh, set, and pressed it really firmly into the antler where I wanted the uh, imprint to match, you know, where I was replacing it. Turned out really good. I know it looks pretty crude, but it worked really well. So I took it and bent it a little bit like a banana to accommodate the curve. Also allow me to kind of walk it along and press it in. It also hides these edges up here so they don't show. The only thing I didn't do is put it on a place on the antler where not only have it curve this way from end to end, but also side to side. So these little ridges right here were tough to hide. If I had to do it again, I would find a place on the horn where it goes up and down this way, but also up and down this way, an area where it's cupped a little better like that. Be a lot easier to hide the print, but it really personalizes it. It's easy to match when you use the exact same horn that you're fixing. So that's where we're at, just finishing up. Wanted to give you an update. I hope I'm getting close. These horns have taken a lot more time than I thought. Much bigger repair than anticipated. So here's what I came up with. This big chunky block here made out of four by fours. I'll put that underneath it's just kind of a cheap mount or that on top of it excuse me and then the horns on top of that that way we can accommodate that big drop at the back not have them rolled so far forward against the wall plus I think the mass of this plaque might look kind of cool kind of looks like a chunk of a barn or fence lines on my garage here to help me center everything. Also you can see that one side needed two studs and the one on the left side only needed one. Just make it sit level. Obviously those darn elk don't grow their antlers identically symmetrical but with a little help we can fix them. Anyway, I'll go get the cap, screw that skull down, put the cap on, and we'll be done. That hanger to hang it onto the wall with, it's got a couple screws and a couple nails securing it to the back of that, if you can see that. So that's what I'm going to mount that with, and then I screwed the plaque right into the 
four by fours. So everything should be pretty solid. All right, we'll go finish her up. Final product, finally on the wall. Still hanging up there, so guess the screws and everything's holding up. If so, we'll call it good. Cap was a little light for me, so I took some leather stain and darkened it. I think it looks a little better. Especially since it's way too small for the size of those horns, so I had to kind of stretch it out. A lot of uh, bone sticking out the sides and stuff. But I don't really care, the whole thing's kind of a rustic look. I like the way those 4x4s turned out. Gave it a lot beefier look, was able to rotate those horns back just a little bit, like I wanted to. Well, please let me know what I did wrong the comments below. If you have any questions, please ask. The uh, tine up there, that I used that mold that I made, that pattern, looks like it turned out pretty good. I don't think I know anyone will even notice that thing was replaced up there. Well, one more project done. Should appreciate you guys watching. Mm -hmm.